Hi, I'm Seamless, and today is Thursday, and it's actually back in the day it used to be that I was I would do an FL Basics tutorial, and actually that's kind of what I'm doing today, because FL 12 came out yesterday, and now everything has changed. Everything has changed. And one of the things that's changed is how you use third-party VSTs inside FL Studio, and how the plugin database works, and all the ways you can have plugins, and all that stuff. All that's kind of different now, so we have to look at how this works. So... In the olden day, what you would do is you would go to channels, which is not there anymore, add one, which is kind of here. It's kind of the inverse of add and channel. And then you come in here and you find the, the, the rescan button, and then you would um, have, find your new plugins, and it'd be in the list, it'd be a gigantic list, it'd be alphabetical, and that's the end of it, and that's how it would work. Um, so you might notice that in here there's actually categories now, and then not only this, there's this way that you can add stuff, you can also add stuff here. You could use the plugin picker, and you could also use the plugin database, which is over here. And you can drag and drop stuff, like, I don't know, whatever, boo base. What's up? Good times. That's how you add stuff now. And there's probably more that I forgot about. This isn't really an FL Basics tutorial. This is kind of a quickly, like, kind of early look kind of thing. Because I actually probably am forgetting a huge portion of things that are important. And I'll, I'll kind of catch up on and then actually, for real, do the FL Basics again. And I'll cover it in more detail. So the primary question people have now is how do you add third-party stuff? And the hilarious answer is the stuff's already added. You just have to know where to look for it. Um, in the plugin database, if you go to installed over here, and then you have effects and generators, and in the list you got VSTs. And it's just there. There they all are. And what it's doing is that it's looking at the VST search folder that you have identified in your uh, options, which by default is program files, x86, VST plugins. That's just what's up. You can change it. You can make it something else. That's just how it's been always, and so if it's if it's already been there, it already found them, and that's just how it, that's what's up. However, if you want to look for new ones, you might have also noticed right there there was this re refresh plug plugin list. It'll find new ones if it didn't already. And every time you hit on new, it actually will do a, a new search in the effects and in the generators for new VSTs. However, those VSTs are in the special folder that are not accessible through here. How do we get them in here? And we, the answer is we can. And it's actually kind of cool the way that we can. My fun, the example I like to do for this is actually to use Massive. Because Massive has a particular hilarious and common issue when everyone ever uses it. Is that when it opens up and we have our initialized version of Massive. Um, it, we are stuck with a preset that we don't like to use. And it's because it has this envelope and then it's on the pan app and whatever. And the first thing most people do is they go to file new sound to use the actual naked, no, nothing is happening version of it. And this is actually true for a lot of FL plugins as well in terms of like Maximus not being the default, Citrus not being the default, that kind of thing. And now we can actually fairly easily determine, we could before you could change defaults for things, but now we can very easily change default. It's just the default. And the way this works is that now I'm going to come up here and I'm going to say, Add a plugin, add the plugin database flag as favorite. And I'm gonna do it like this, and the first thing it's gonna tell me is that it wants me to actually pick a folder. So I'm gonna look around and I could put it in the folder that I want. And like the idea is that we want to keep it organized or whatever. And I'll put it in subtract even though, even though that's not really true. I'm still gonna put it in there for now. Do that. Cool. All right. And bam. And what it did there is it actually took a screenshot of what uh, the, the plugin looks like right now, and that's what it's using as the thumbnail for massive. So now Mass is in the plugin database. It's actually also in the list up here. And then it's also in the plugin picker. Where is that? There it is. Ah. And if I go to synthesizer, it's in there too. It's kind of neat. Now, what if you don't want to be in synthesizer? What if you actually don't? Also, notice you can delete it from right here. What if you don't want it to be there, but if you want to have your own thing, kind of just make it something, you know, a bit better? You could actually, you can create your own categories. For example, if I come in here, go to open. It opens up the directory for it. I'm just going to make a new folder. Check it out. It shows up immediately. I'm going to call it VST, just because. It has the benefit of coming in uh, last because it's ordered alphabetically, and they'll see why this is important in a second. So now when I go open a massive again, and I say, I, I click on VST, plug in database, boom, it gets put into VST. Kick ass. Now why this is cool is because if I go to add channel, actually shows up as its own category, and now if I put all my third-party stuff, it would show up automatically on this side. And also still shows up in here, and then VST gets its own category inside the plugin picker right next to the all button. 
you can actually, you have complete control over the entire directory. If you want, you can get rid of all the categories and just have it be the old school alphabetical list with no, no treeing, no folders, none of that. You can just do it. If that's what you want to do, you can do it. You have complete control over how that works out. This is just the default configuration that is just present the way that's it's here. And so if you do that for all your stuff and then you could put it, you, you know, in effects and generators and whatever, and you get, you get your nice lists and then you have total control over how it's, it's organized and it looks and you can just have all that kind of good stuff. And that's how you get plugins, third party plugins to be integrated inside FL stuff. It even has its own freaking thumbnail, which I think is really cool because I was really tired of looking at the little plugin icon when I'm using it inside patcher, because now if I use patcher, where's patcher and I want and I want to use massive. It actually looks like massive, which I, I mean, you know, practically it doesn't really matter because it was always going to work anyway, but that's what I was thinking. I was patcher de detaches everything. Now it's not, there's no editor window anymore. You can just look at everything like it's real. Oh, it's just so good. But like, it didn't really matter because it, when you click on it, it would open up and it would just be there. But it's just nice to see things integrated like this. It's just nice. And it does so procedurally. You can do it for anything. So, yeah, good stuff. Um, if you have, uh, Remember to like, comment, and subscribe, share, favorite, all that social media stuff in my videos. Please do because I want you to. Um, if you have any questions about this, let me know. And as usual, have a nice day.